Well, it's dark and it's almost time. It's almost go time. Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is currently the indoors, but we are going to the outdoors. I just have to put all my camera stuff away and pack it good for the drive out. So I wanna do my introduction in the cabin. I am up at Baker's Narrows Lodge in Northern Manitoba. Lake Trout is the goal today. I've got one more day to go crush some Lakers with my good buddy, Mac Mulligan. And uh, yeah, not really sure of the game plan besides the fact that we're gonna try to put some Lakers on the ice, maybe talk about some my favorite lures for Lake Trout, Mac's favorite lures for Lake Trout, and hopefully cook a trout chowder today. That's definitely one of the goals, but we'll see what happens. So we'll get the sled fired up and we'll get going. Let's do it. Look at that beautiful sky. Of course, I'll be dark because I'll be silhouetted, but we are officially set up out here. Max already got some deadlines out for us. I'm going over to the shelter now, his shelter, so you can meet him. At some point, we will fish together, but for right now, I'm going to outfish him heavily when he's in his shelter and I'm in mine. He's rocking right now the new uh, Vortex Pro Lodge with the full door. I love this shelter, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, let's go say hi to Mac. You guys need to meet Mac. I know he was in my last video, but for the people that maybe haven't seen the last video yet, we'll uh, give him a quick little introduction. Hi Mac. What's going on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, uh, your light told that we got hit totally hard with uh, the fog. It's so hot in there, dude. It's like a sauna. Step out, step out here. There we go. I love it. There we go. Okay, now look at the steam coming out. <laughs> I love it. This is Mac. Mac, you guided Baker's Narrows Lodge, right, baby? Yeah, baby. He's a uh, full-time fishing guide out here. Summer, winter, fall. As you saw in the last video, he put me on some big Lakers. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try to do it again today. Maybe talk a little bit about lake trout baits, that type of thing, but like I said, the sun's just coming up and it's time to drop some lines. Get hooking. Yeah, buddy. Get hooking. I like it. And I am in the Otter Resort. Once again, love that shelter for filming. This Skidoo 900 Ace Expedition's been rocking. Loving it. The rack on the back to carry everything. Ion Auger's been so good. Oh. I said it before, and I said it, I'll say it again. What a life. Oh, mark up there at 32 feet. Is it a trout or a Cisco? Looks a little Cisco ish. Oh, no. I'd say Laker because it's following. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Maybe we'll hit it when it's falling. Oh, there's two trout because this one's falling on a hit or going down with it. There's two leakers there. I'm gonna stop and get it going up again. There's two lake trout there. One up high, one down low. Come on. Come on. Nice. It didn't take long at all. Five minutes of fishing. It was hooked up with our first fish. Hopefully that's a sign some things to come, baby. Unbelievable. Two Lakers were up high in the water column, like 32 feet. It's a little head shaky. Can't tell size. It's not that big. I got them right here at the hole almost. Like I said, it's not that big, but it's not a it's not a tiny one either. This is where you lose them a lot of times, right at the hole, especially if you got a really tight drag. They can pull hooks so simple, so easy. Come on, baby. Get that knot through the eyelets and there. Nothing to it, nothing to it. On the board maybe, it's gonna come off. Nope, we're on the board. This one's a little too big to keep for trout chowder. Yeah, I'll get it to you. I just, I got a fish right now, Mac. No, I got it in my hands. I'm up on you by one. Uh, it's a little bit too big for lunch. We're just dropping back down. This is the bait that I'm using down there right now. A Savage Gear Sand Eel. This is the bigger size one. This is a seven and a half inch. I have on the six and a half inch. This is bait number one of the day right now. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite baits, to be honest. 
I'll try to find a link and put it below. But it has been really, really good for me. In the past, it's not a bait that I've used a lot. It's one of those things that I'm just starting to gain a lot of confidence in. And uh, in a recent video, I slammed on them. And uh, yeah, this was a really, really good start. I also put on the bottom because it only it comes with a single hook on the top. I put on a split ring on the bottom with a Savage Gear grip treble hook. Sometimes they're on the treble hook. Sometimes they're on the big hook. It's been a really, really deadly bait. Not going to lie. Let's have fun. Let's switch around baits a little bit. Now, Dragon Slayer from Frostbite. It's another favorite bait. This one, I already have a pile of confidence in. I've slammed with in the past. It's a really, really good action bait plus a big fish bait. I've caught multiple nice fish with it and I've caught a lot of fish with it. I've got it paired with a half ounce Kalen's Google Eye swim bait jig. It's a really, really good jig for this Dragon Slayer, I find. What was the fish here coming? Chasing hard? Come on. Come on. Come on. Nice. Hit it right here. Oh, they're going to go upset. I think so. Nice. That fish chased up high. I don't know. I think it's a decent fish, too. I'm not sure yet. It chased up high. So I'm at a scary area where it hasn't burnt any energy yet. Oh, that was unbelievable. <laughs> You just sometimes got to get these fish chasing. That's the ticket. Not all the time. Sometimes down low, right? Like it always changes. Always changes. Nice. Dragon Slayer, baby. Nails fish too. Or maybe. We'll see if I get them landed. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice silver. Really silver fish. Unbelievable. So good. About the same size as the other one probably. Okay, come on, baby. There we go. There we go. Maybe, maybe a little bit bigger than the other one, actually. A little bit bigger than the last fish. Fish two, baby. Awesome. Okay, I can't get him to settle like that, so we're going to tail him and try to get him. He's got lots of energy left yet. Look at that gorgeous fish. Silver. I love how Lake Trail got so many different colors. Dark, white, silver type of thing. So cool. Got the dragon slayer right in the top of the lip. Nothing to it. One more quick show off here and back down. But a beautiful second fish. What a start to the day. Unbelievable. That's a nice, like, probably, oh, easy 30 inch fish. Easy girl, easy girl. Sorry, buddy. Oh, so good. Success with the Dragon Slayer for fish two. And this is what I caught that fish on Kalen's Google Eye half ounce jig Dragon Slayer from Frostbite. Links below for both of these with lake trout you don't always have to be jigging right on the bottom i spend a lot of my time jigging like 15 20 feet off the bottom sometimes and then if obviously you mark a fish down low you drop down you mark a fish up high you reel up but you'd be amazed how many times you'll be jigging middle water column and a mark will just poof, appear right on you or they can see 20 feet up no problem they'll come up from the bottom too easily i'm not saying you should always jig up high but don't forget to jig up high sometimes as well Just hardly tapped it. Hardly. Oh, again. Hardly. This one likes it really soft. This one likes little soft movements. It's funny how every fish is so different. Another fish coming from the bottom. Come straight up at it. Yeah. Oh, I just got hammered. Just got hammered. That other fish, a little bit of competition. Uh oh. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. I don't know if this was the first one or the second one. I'm going to guess it was the second one that came up off the bottom because he was a lot more aggressive than that first mark that I was just marking on the spot. He come up and picked it up as I was just wiggling it around. This one feels like our chowder fish for sure, I'd say. Oh, yeah. This is our luncher right here. Yes, luncher. Nice. We can officially have trout chowder. This guy right here will be lunch. Well, excuse all the blood here, but I do like to bleed my trout out. The meat is just going to be a little bit better. Okay, well, we caught a couple fish on the Dragon Slayer and the Kalen's Google Eye Jig. 
Now we're gonna go to another favorite, the 100 millimeter size tantrum from Frostbite. This is a good one too. Oh, we're charging from the bottom fast. Look at this, straight up. Yep, nice. Like I said, middle of the water column, you can jig sometimes, or like I said, 10, 15 feet up even, whatever. And then those fish will come right up off the bottom and come fast. That was awesome. He just comes shooting straight up. Easy, buddy. Be another little eater if we were keeping more. If you come off there, that's okay. Back down, he's gonna go. He's got a little cataract. I don't know if you can show up on the video, but it's a little cataract on his eye. Just a little guy. But that would be a really good fish for Mac. Got another mark down there too. A little bit better mark maybe actually down there right now. Let's get down there quick. Let's get down there quick. Mine or yours? Okay, I'm coming. Max got a flag. Max got a flag. This is exciting. I'm nervous for you because you're you're not that good at fishing. So. I know. You're such a rookie. <laughs> Love it. Oh yeah, that's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> oh yeah, buddy. Oh boy. Come on, be the one. Be the one. We got two deadlines out here, one here and then one just a little bit over there. We're each, each fishing one hole in the shack so we could each have a deadline at the same time. And it's been pretty cold out. So Mac has this foam mat right here that covers the hole. Plus he's been dumping down boiling water, you said, right? Yeah. He's yeah. been... Every uh, 25 minutes. He's, yeah, he's just been putting down warm water down the, the hole as much as he can as well. So, yeah, let's open that better. Deadly. You can grab him and everything, hey, buddy? Oh, yeah. Perfect. You've, you've landed a few big lake trout in your, your time here, hey? Let's we'll see. <laughs> oh, ours are not. Ours are not. How's it, how's it looking? I couldn't tell either. I saw, flash. I just saw a silver flash too. Oh, we're gonna land this fish and we'll go straight into the shack with like it. High thirties, nice, perfect. So we're gonna land this fish, go right to the shack with it, where it's nice and warm for the fish. Then so cold. it is cold, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. He could. Max said he was marking a big mark a little bit earlier, and we're like, hopefully it'll go over to a, a dead bait. Unbelievable. So good. So good. And after this fish, I'll probably start to cook the chowder, get everything going there. Life is good. Oh, big bubbles. I love it. You just got to be so careful around the hole, right? Because like, yeah. and your line gets caught so easily. You got two trebles in sequence, right? Yeah, exactly. So easy for a treble to catch a hook or catch the ice, and yeah, I mean, Max got two double. He's got tens there. Nice, nice fish, nice fish. We'll we'll take it to the shack and we'll show it off to the big camera. Nice. So Max got him in the hole. He's gonna pull him up, show him off, and yeah, we figure about a 34, 35 inch or something like that. Yeah. Nice fish. Quality silver. Love it. Scoops up the Cisco on the bottom. So good, buddy. Awesome. So good. Doesn't matter what fold I put. Nope, wherever you want. Doesn't matter. It's all good. See ya. There you go. Perfect. Oh, look at this. Oh, big mark. Big mark. Big mark. Big mark. Big mark. Oh, chase it down, maybe. Come on. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. I just had a big mark come up, yeah, 10, 
10 feet off the bottom. I just had a big mark on my shock too. Oh. Oh. I don't think this is him. No, this isn't him, but it's a fish. Definitely not him. But it's aggressive, more, definitely a little bit more aggressive. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Eat it. Eat it. Oh, he's just too small. He's just too small. When you get a third crack at him, he'll get a third crack at him. Oh, again. <laughs> it's hard to hook up on a smaller fish when you have a big tube jig, which is what I have on right now. Oh, there's another mark down there. 39. We're going to go after that one in case that's the bigger one. I don't think it is. Oh, it's hard to tell for sure right now. No, I don't think it is. Right, let's go after this one though instead. Come on. Nice, got him. Okay, got him. Definitely not. They're not big. Not like that other mark. That's for sure. But two fish came in and I'm on another different bait. This is uh, one of my favorites, which I get asked about more than anything about where you can get these tube jigs. <laughs> he inhaled it. This is what I needed that bigger fish to do. This guy just inhaled it. I really needed that bigger fish just to bite, period. But there's my fifth laker of the day. This one's built solid, just shorter. Okay, you get back down. I get asked this question more than any other question on my YouTube videos, where can you get these nice six inch jelly silk char silk chartreuse tubes? I talked Pokey's tackle into carrying them. So there'll be a link below straight to these. I know I'm saying a lot of link belows, but I wanna give you guys options of where to get some of these lures that I'm using today. So chartreuse tube jig, if it ain't chartreuse, ain't no use. This is my simple trout chowder recipe first step is to get water boiling you want to use just enough water to basically cover the amount of potatoes that you're going to use and that'll make more sense here in a little bit but first step get some water boiling step two cut up your potatoes into like smaller cubes you want to go a little bit smaller so they boil and they cook a lot quicker usually go about one potato per person but even like with two people a potato and a half is good Whereas three people, two potatoes will be lots type of thing. So you can usually go one less than the people you have. But obviously if you only have one person, well, you got to bring one potato. I like to do this all in an area where I can quickly move stuff. If I have to land a fish or worry about a fish, right? I can just shut the heat off, move my thing over and I'm good to go. So keep that in mind. If you start doing it like right where you're fishing and everything like that, it can turn into a gong show when you finally hook a fish. Okay, water's pretty much boiling. Your potatoes are going to take longer than anything else to cook. Your, your uh, potato cooking is the longest part of the process is what I'm basically trying to say. You can always add some like salt in there and seasonings and that type of thing. I didn't bring anything with me. I'm gonna put just a little bit of butter in there right now. And yeah, here we go. The dill weed is my secret weapon. I'm gonna add just a little bit now in the potatoes, but I'm gonna be putting more of it later when we kind of are finishing it all up. I have another, I have a chowder that I do a little bit differently when I can cook on an open fire. I actually prefer to like pan fry up my potatoes first and then add in all my liquid and stuff. But this is just a lot easier on the ice to do it in a, a little one burner like this with the water. Looks like I'm fogging up there a little bit, but I basically want to get these potatoes to about 80% cook because they're still going to cook throughout the rest of this process. You don't want to cook them completely right now because you're still going to be adding some other ingredients to it. I apologize for the whole fogging up thing. My potatoes are cooked. Now I'll add some corn. The corn's obviously already cooked, so we're basically just getting it all, all warm. The potatoes right now, like I said, they're about 80, 85% cooked. Okay, we're using one whole filet here from that lake trout. Mac cleaned it up for us. Thank you, Mac. I use the whole filet because as it cooks, it'll all kind of break apart. I see I got a pretty full pot here. Little, I could use a little bit bigger pot for this, I think. But as it cooks, it'll all kind of flake apart. You can put it in chunks as well. That'll work, as work too. But put the whole filet in there and then basically break it up as you're cooking. Oh, here comes a mark to my tube fast. Oh, look at that. Come on. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, we're cooking chowder and catching leak trout. 
I was quick on that one. I saw the mark of the corner of my eye chasing up. I'm like, okay, let's get going on here. Part of me hopes it just kind of knocks off at the hole, I think, but we'll do what we can quick. We'll do what we can with you quick, buddy. See, that's what happens when you chase tube jigs, buddy. You become chowder. Nice, nice little bonus fish while cooking. Good old tube jig. Even when they're smaller, when they're on, they're on. Okay, our fish is starting to break apart. So we're just kind of flaking it all apart there. And as it completely cooks, it'll flake up real nice. Okay, so our fish is cooked now. What we're gonna do is just dump out a little bit of the water. Not much, but a little bit, because we're gonna be adding some uh, cream here. Although we're losing some corn, but that's okay. Okay, and then we're gonna add whipping cream right there whipping cream works great for this I probably could have dumped out a little more water and we're gonna add some more butter and we're gonna melt that butter bring that to a boil actually we're also going to add a pile of dill weed mix that all up get that butter melted bring it back to a boil and we'll be ready personal preference you can like add some hot sauce and all that as well to go with it but uh i'll add our hot sauce extra just in case mac doesn't like it too spicy well there we have it chowder i forgot my spoon so i'm gonna slurp it yeah. mac was smart he brought a spoon if you forget your utensils a little cleo spoon will work just perfect it goes a long way yeah oh there's a fish flashing in here just below 45 feet Oh yeah, here it goes, look at this. Come on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pretty sure it's small, but wow. They are definitely aggressive today. Not marking a pile in the last little bit, but the ones I'm marking, we're catching. The ones I'm marking, we are catching. Awesome, not marking a pile. Tell you what, the small ones have so much energy. Like he's just tensing in my hands. He, yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. Like I said, I don't know, maybe I didn't say I went back to the Dragon Slayer for a little bit. This has always been a favorite of mine. I've gone to white though this time here with the half ounce Kalen Google swim bait jig. I know I've mentioned a few times, but it's always been a good bait for me. Well, back at the lodge right now, I had all these plans to like get back after fishing and film the inside of the lodge and like this amazing fish taco supper that we had. It's just really loud and noisy in there. So I didn't do much filming in there. There was a little fireplace. I met with all the people that are at the lodge right now. It was awesome to just see all the people that are up here to experience the whole lake trail thing. So today was really, really good. We ended up with a couple more fish. We saw some really big marks, both Mac and I, but we never connected on anything after Mac's uh, fish there that he caught. That was around that 35 inch or so. It was a good day all in all, probably a quick little video. I really have no idea where it's gonna go for sure, but thank you to Brett and of course, Mac and all the, the our whole guide staff here and the rest of their staff at uh, Baker's Narrows Lodge. I will be back. I love it up here. And as always, thank you so much. Don't forget, get outside.